Hey guys, welcome to one of two of my bathrooms, specifically the lower basement bathroom. And as you can see behind me, we have an old antiquated shower design. Today we're going to take it from this to this. So some of you guys might be saying to yourself, you know what, that shower doesn't really look that bad. Why are we updating it? Well, I'm going to bring you around real quick to all the problems I have with this shower. Let's just go rapid fire through all of these. It has a shower curtain and not a proper glass door. The bottom bit is water damaged and crumbling pretty bad. The drain isn't even centered. This is the only light in the bathroom, so it's very dark inside of the shower because of this wall right here. As well, I don't really understand why we have this upper part. It should be open to the rest of the room so we can get moisture into the vent. When I bought the house, this shower was already done and this was just a hole to the outside of the world. There was a roof vent on the other side and since moving in, I've glass blocked it over because I didn't want just cold and hot air in the winter and summer blowing right through into my shower. This shower is actually two layers of tile, which I don't know why the hell you'd ever do that, but I know that because I had to break some away when I was inserting these glass blocks, which is not appropriately sized because I didn't want to redo all this at the time. The shower has quite a mold problem all the time, which I haven't recently bothered to clean out because I'm going to destroy this. So as I've just told you, this shower is very much in disrepair, out of date, and this wall is quite stupid. So let's go ahead and tear everything down. I just want to take a second out of our demo work and look down here where our wall was bulging and you can see there was clearly a failure of the waterproofing system. Obviously we have a PVC shower liner down there, but Either that has failed or more than likely the walls have failed, but uh, we'll keep demolishing and see what we see. You know, I can't see why they tiled over the old tiles. They were just beautiful. I just got done smashing the right wall, or I guess the back wall of the shower, and you can see a lot of wetness back here, especially on the back piece holding up the tiles. Now I'll show you where things are in relation as I step out of the washroom here and go around to the other side. Because I did notice this little patch down here happening about half a year ago, and well, I guess my suspicions were right. The shower is leaking, and uh, yeah, that sucks. I'll have to fix this too. On with the demolition. Well, now that we've uncovered all this black mold, which I've sprayed with bleach and cleaned out, and there's a little bit of rot, but these things aren't too far gone. I'm gonna go ahead and carve out this section of drywall here because we had that bit of an accident when the ceiling fell down. Also, there's another dent here, here, and we need to replace the drywall here, which had turned moldy on the other side as well. So we'll just cut this out and slap up a new piece and patch it on the outside.
So this drain is completely knackered and needs to come out. And I was kind of poking around with the screwdriver and I noticed a little bit of movement and there really shouldn't be as this should be a strong cemented ABS connection. So uh, yeah, let's just try prying it up. Okay, that was never glued down and uh, that's really dumb. Anyways, here's the new drain we're going to install, and uh, yeah, we might have to cut off a little bit of this pipe, but that's it. So we've got the insanely twisted 2x4 studding out of here, and that's a good thing now that I think about it, because I'm actually going to be putting in a shower nook here, so that'll allow me to space the new 2x4s correctly to have that totally centered here. I won't have to reframe anything, well, kind of, but anyways, yeah, we're going to put two new 2x4s here, and then on the back wall, because I want to put the same R20 uh, two by six width insulation on the back. I've got some two by fours. I've ripped down the center and we're going to use these to fur out the walls so we get that thicker insulation in there. So I've got everything pretty much framed in. We got the nook over here. We've got a spot for our rainfall waterfall to get attached to. And I've reinforced all this and leveled everything out using the power planer and shimming where I've needed to. Just going across with the level and making sure everything is totally flat because we don't want to develop any kind of lippage where the edge of the tiles don't meet up because we have a warp in the wall. Anyways, that's all taken care of. And it's finally gotten to the point where I've decided I'm going to reset this drain. It's not in the center this way, it's not in the center this way, and just when I go to make the slope, it'll be a lot easier, everything will look a lot better if it's in the center. So I'm going to start by drilling a 2 inch hole here with my jackhammer drill right down, and then I'm going to chip it all up and we'll replumb the drain to be actually in the center. So we've got the drain set in the middle of the shower or where the shower is going to be and we've got all our plumbing all fully cemented in so we're going to go ahead and backfill this with a little bit of quick read. So now that the drain is set and this is pretty much dry we're going to move on to the next step which is building our shower curb. Now I'm choosing to do this by first attaching this 2x4 piece down to the ground with a couple tap cons and then building it up with another piece and then finally another top piece. Now this top piece I did run through my planer with a piece of wood under one edge. So the whole thing has a gradual slope going down towards the inside of the shower. You don't want any water to shed towards the inside. So we'll get this tap con down and then screw these down. And that's our curb. So as you can see, there's not a lot to frame around the window because we have the existing studs and header up here. So I'm just going to add in another piece of studding down here. It's actually a five inch wide piece I ripped from a two by six. And we're just going to make sure that it has a slight slope on it, one or two degrees. So if any water does get up here, it sheds off. Okay, now it's time for insulation. You see on the bottom, I've already got one piece of styrofoam installed, and this just has the foil backing on both sides, and it's just gonna get smacked into place on the bottom here, squeezed between the studs. It won't go anywhere. Then up here, we're gonna install the R20 bat insulation, as well as in the headers. Then we'll cover everything with our vapor barrier and tuck tape all our seams.
So next I want to install a little corner stool over here, which is just going to be a few triangles and some legs tying everything together. And it'll have a very gradual slope coming from the back to the front. So any water that builds up here goes over to the drain. Let's go in the shop and build that up. So I want to get as many things soldered together before I get into the house out here in the garage as I'm not putting as many fumes into the house. So one of the pieces I need to attach right away without even measuring is I know this top piece which is going to go on the ceiling and this long bar which is going to go over to the side wall. So all you do to solder these together is you clean them with a little bit of 100 grit sandpaper both sides inside of this and the outside of the pipe. Just want to scuff it up a bit. That way the solder has a good bite. Then we'll take our flux here, get some on our little acid brush, brush it on the inside, not too much, just want to coat it. And then we're just going to slip it on. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part. If you have a striker, use that. I don't, so I'm just going to turn on the gas. And then we're just going to heat up the fitting and the pipe kind of all together. More of the fitting because that's going to take more of the heat than the pipe itself. And then we'll touch the solder to it and we'll see it suck itself all the way into around the whole joint. Simple as that. It's too hot to touch right now, but we can use a paper towel and just give it a quick wipe down without burning our hand to get the extra flux off. And we'll just do that for all of our joints. So because of the way this diverter is, it has these half inch NPT fittings instead of just a direct solder or PEX connection. So you have to buy an adapter for each end. And because of this, I'm using Teflon tape on the end and I don't want to burn the Teflon tape during soldering. So I can't just do everything in place. I've had to make all these pieces beforehand and I have to attach them in a certain order to get this all to work correctly, especially with the plumbing that I have inside the house. So the first step is going to be to attach this piece to the bottom because I won't be able to spin this if these other side pieces are in place. Then I'll get these two side pieces on, mount it to the board, bring it into the house, connect it to the plumbing, and the last step is going to be attaching the top because there's no interference with that. We can do that at any time. Okay, so now we've got the water shut off and we're going to remove this old system by cutting these pipes a little longer than we need them right now and we'll get this mounted after the fact and cut them to final length. Okay, so I've got the two couplers soldered in. We're fully connected down below. Now off camera, I did have to take this all apart and redo it and drain those pipes because if you have any water in the pipes, it doesn't work. And the main shutoff to my house doesn't fully work, so I had to do it really fast and get it all soldered. Fortunately, it worked this time, but you know that's the things you gotta deal with with copper in a crappy shutoff valve. Again, this project would be way easier if you just use PEX, especially with the problems like I have. Anyways, this is our wand attachment right here. So I've got it set to the right depth and everything. I'm gonna get this soldered in place. Then we're gonna add the brace behind it so it never moves.
Okay, so on to hanging the cement board in the shower. And we're gonna do that with these inch and a quarter specialized screws for hanging cement board. And we're gonna be cutting it the same as drywall. We're just marking our lines, cutting it on the front, snapping it, cutting it on the back. And for the hole in the middle for our waterfall shower head, I just got an old hole saw that I don't care that gets dull from eating up all the cement. Okay, so all the cement board is up and I've gone around and made sure that all the screws are below the surface. So when we go to fill those holes with thin set, we don't hit any screw heads. Now, besides that, I've also gone around and vacuumed all the walls. And then I followed that up with just giving everything a light sponging to get all the loose dust off of everything because we want good adhesion with our fiberglass tape here, which this is the next step. We're gonna take this and put it everywhere that there's a corner, there's a seam, anything like that. And then after that, we're going to go ahead with the gray thin set mortar and we're going to fill all the screw holes, go over all our tape joints. It's essentially like drywalling, but with thin set. So I had a little problem with the two inch tape sticking to the outside corners. So everywhere I've had an outside corner on the step, on the window, on the nook, and here on the sill, all I'm doing because I have a bunch of this two inch left over is I'm just going around the entire thing and making really long strips this way and I'll work my way across the whole curb. Now what you really want to do is buy the four inch and that'll make sure that it sticks and doesn't pop up the way mine was. Now this is a little bit tedious, but it is the price of being cheap. The walls are fully sealed. We got our thin set and our fiberglass tape on everything. It's nice and dry. We're gonna move on to the shower pan now, which in order to do this, I'm gonna be using these sticks all around the perimeter in conjunction with the drain right here to set my slope, which is a one quarter inch rise for every foot. So here we're about inch and a half. On the outside, we're a little over two inches, two and an eighth or so. So I've got these sticks set here, all cut to the perimeter, and I'm just gonna keep them in place with some hot glue for now. And then I've got these sticks right here, which we're gonna use once we get the dry pack in here or the speed slope, whatever you wanna call it. And this is how I'm gonna scrape that mortar back and forth with these different length sticks that'll allow me to reach every possible corner, getting a perfect slope. So now that our sloped pan is nice and dry, it's hard as a rock, obviously, I want to go ahead and remove these forms around the edges. And then once we remove them, we'll fill them in with more of this material. And the way I'm going to remove them is they're held in place with some hot glue. So I'm going to melt the hot glue with some isopropyl alcohol. Then I'm going to install a couple screws on either end, and then I'm going to pry up on it using this piece of wood so I don't dig into the cement.
So as I was filling in the rest of the deck mud around the edges, I did run out and I put a little bit of thin set in. And then I ended up spreading a bit of it around here. And I really like the finish this left me with. This is super rough and I'm not totally convinced it's going to make a good bond for the red guard. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little small layer of thin set all over everything here just to get it nice and smooth. So the shower surround is complete. Everything's been sealed up with thin set and fiberglass tape. The bottom pan is fully sloped and cured. We gave it three days to dry because you don't want to risk any bit of moisture underneath there and ruining the red guard. That being said, the waterproofing method I'm going with on this shower is red guard. Now, the number one thing I see with people using red guard and how they totally screw it up is they don't use the fiberglass or waterproof membrane, whatever you want to call it, in all of the corners, inside corners, exterior corners, anywhere there's a change of plane where two different angles meet. Anyways, I made a mistake going to the Home Depot and I bought this Red Guard tape. I thought this was the stuff you're supposed to use. Turns out this is the stuff you're supposed to use if you're using the Red Guard underlayment for like a decoupling member, kind of like the uh, Detra mat. Anyways, this is the stuff you want. You can buy a 75 foot roll for 20 bucks on Amazon because they don't sell it in my stores at least. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead get all the corners pasted in place before we go ahead and roll the rest of the shower. That'll make this waterproof. Now when it comes to it, I will show you exactly what we're going to do with the bottom because there is some confusion on how to use Redguard as a shower pan as well. So to seal up the drain, you see I have a standard drain here. If you wanted to, you could go for the Curdy drain or similar products, and that's probably your better bet with this Red Guard system. But with a traditional drain, what I've done is I've taken off the other flanges and I've installed some temporary quarter 20 bolts, as that's the size this uses. And I've cut out my strips right here. You see I have a slot here and then a hole here. So this is just gonna go over both these bolts. And then we'll red guard everything down. We'll red guard underneath, place this down, smush everything to follow this curve here. And then we'll just put our next piece right here and same thing. Once this is all dry, we'll come back, cut the inside. And once our final coat is on, we'll put the clamp back on. And that's how you install that type of drain. So you'll see the slope comes to here and then greatly increases its steepness. And that's because this area right here will get filled with pea stone. So the thin set doesn't block all the weep holes for that clamping ring that will come down after this is all installed. So the red guard is cured. I put three coats on everything, including the shower pan. Now we're going to go ahead and install our drain. As you can see on the bottom and top, it's got these little weep hole chambers. That's for letting the water get in instead of just pooling up here. So what I need to do is score around these temporary bolts. We're just going to throw these out. These are just quarter 20 bolts. These are the real ones that come with the kit. They're a nice brass. So we'll score around this so we don't rip up the membrane. And then we'll also score around the inside circle here so water can actually get to the drain. Okay, we'll just put this over top. Our slope comes just above the top of this, which will be easy to set our rock tile, which I'll show you in a minute. 
And this is gonna be the final height of the drain. Now this has a screw here, screw here, so it is fully adjustable height-wise. So wherever the top of our tiles end up, we can adjust it just by screwing it in and out. Now it's finally on to putting some floor tiles in. Now the reason I'm doing the floor tiles first is because RedGuard demands that you cover up whatever you've put RedGuard on immediately so it doesn't get damaged. As seeing as we're gonna have to work in here to install the ceiling tiles and the wall tiles and all that, I wanna get the floor covered as soon as possible. Also, because of the way these mosaic tiles are, there's a bit of a gap along the edges. And you see, I have fit three perfectly tiles along this way, so I don't have to do any cutting. And because of these gaps right here, the tile will be built out from the wall and will cover these up. So I don't have to fill in any of these spots, just some grout and it'll look totally natural. So let's go ahead and get all the dry fit done because I wanna get all my pieces pre-cut. I don't wanna fumble around with anything when I'm going to install this and I'll get a perfect layout and perfect circle cut around the drain. Time has finally come. We've got our white thin set mortar mixed up with the additive to make it a modified mortar. That's what it recommends for stone as well as porcelain and glass. So all three we're using. So we're always gonna be using the white thin set that's been modified with the additive. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my trowel, scoop out the thin set, slap it down, and then we're gonna work it in with the flat side of the trowel. Once we have a nice coating, we'll come back with the rake pull it in one direction only towards ourselves, so all the ridges are going the same direction so they'll be easily collapsed and no air pockets get stuck. And it's simple as that. We'll just lay a strip, lay some tile, keep going. Now, we don't wanna put individual pressure points on any of these stones because that one will be lower than the rest. So I've got my float here to put even pressure amongst a bunch of them at once. So before I spread the thin set around the drain, I wanna go ahead and put a bunch of these little tiny rocks around our weep holes so that I get plugged up with all the thin set. So because I have a little bit of thin set left, I've gone ahead and cut up the little shower nook shelf here. There'll be another one here, but we can't install that until the two side pieces are in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trowel on some thin set here, maybe do a little back buttering and slap it in place, make sure it has a proper slope facing towards the drain. Okay, the floor is now dry enough that we can stand on it at least 24 hours. And we're gonna go ahead and start putting tiles on this back wall first. Now I'm gonna start over here, which is kinda not what you would think, but because of my pattern and the way things are gonna lay out, I need to get this piece cut first and then work up from here because we'll have a full piece here, a full piece here, and a little sliver there. Now I know you're thinking to yourself, well, that's not gonna look right. It will because we'll have a almost full piece over here. So it kind of looks like the tiles are wrapping around the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead, mark this piece and then use my manual tile cutter. All you do is mark it, score it with a little wheel down here, then put this over it and crack it. Simple as that. We don't have to use the wet tile saw at all. No dust, no mess, super quick. And that's all for the straight cuts. Now for corner cuts and all that other stuff, we're gonna have to go outside and use the wet tile saw. There we go, there's our first cut. This piece is gonna go right here. This will be saved for later. And then we're gonna have another whole piece right here. 
Now, the one thing that I am going to do is I'm going to cut an inch and a half off of the bottom of my first row, and that's just going to make everything line up better around the window and the shower nook so we don't have little bits of slivers of tile and everything's nice and big. So let's go outside and use the wet tile saw to rip an inch and a half off of all of our starter tiles. Okay, we got this far on this wall and that's because right around here I'm going to be installing a triangular shelf in the corner. So we'll stop right there for now and begin working on this wall. To begin working on this, I've cut to length this piece of 5 16 edging right here. It's the same thickness as the tile. And I've got a little bit of double sided tape on the bottom so it doesn't move back and forth as we're putting on the tiles. And I'm just going to tape the top temporarily and remove that once this is set with the thin set. So that'll go like that and then we'll begin tiling. I've got this notched out piece for around the curb down here. And then we'll begin putting in our glass mosaic 6 inch wide strip tile from floor to ceiling right here. And then we'll finish that off with another partial piece of regular tile in the corner. So the way that I'm going to deal with this ugly transition right here between the metal edge and the existing drywall slash plasterboard is just putting some drywall spackle in there, letting it harden, paint it, it'll look just fine. Okay, so next up we're going to begin work on the shower nook now that we have our walls established on the side. You see I've got a piece over here and a piece over here. It has a slight bevel on the bottom because this is angled towards the drain. So this will go like this. And then this piece will go right here. And this piece also has the same bevel on the bottom as well as the top, because when I go to put the shelf on, this guy right here, this will also have a slight bevel to it, getting the water off the shelf. So now I need to cut out a hole in this particular tile right here in this spot, which I've measured out in the ceiling for the rainfall shower head. Now what I have here is about a two inch hole saw, diamond hole saw, which will cut through this porcelain. And it doesn't have a center bit to keep it on track. So what I've done is clamp down a piece of wood with the same size hole, and that'll keep it totally in line so it's not wandering all over as I drill it. So tiling the shower really has been a multi-day process, several days of just doing things one after another. I'm pretty sure you can't do this in one or two days, it doesn't really seem realistic. So the way I've kind of broken things up is I just installed that overhead trim piece there, all the trim around here, and I am going to do the tiles and trim around the top of the nook here in one go, as it's a little less to worry about. Trying to do everything at once is really cumbersome and gets really stressed out, so just take it in small stages if you need to. Now, one thing I'm going to do for the ceiling, which I didn't do anywhere else, is back buttering the tiles. It might not be totally necessary, but it's going to make me feel a little bit better. I know for sure it's not necessary for the walls or the floor, as even if 50% tile of coverage is made, it, they're not going anywhere. I couldn't get these off the wall by prying on them, even after lightly pressing on them. So everything is going nowhere fast. So let's get to finishing up the tile. So 
So that's it. The tiling is finally complete. Now, last night, me and the wife, we went around with a little screwdriver and pick and kind of cleared out all the little grout lines. I did a pretty good job as I was tiling as that's really the time we want to keep the grout lines clear of excess thin set squeeze out because it really sucks when it's fully dried trying to clean it out. Anyways, now I'm going to go ahead and remove this floor covering and see what kind of damage is going on down there. Okay, so we got the floor cleaned up. I got all the grout lines cleaned out, vacuumed everything super well. Now it's on to grouting. So there is complete instructions how to mix the grout and how to apply it and all that written on the back of the box that you buy the grout in, hopefully. But the gist of it is you're gonna mix it up, spread it into all the lines, use your float to get rid of all the excess, wait 20 minutes, wipe it off with a sponge, come back in 40 minutes, and then wipe it all down with a clean towel to get all the haze off. So I'm going to go ahead and start up here in the window and the ceiling and just work my way down. If it takes a couple days to do it, that's fine too. So the grout is complete and it looks fantastic in here. Now it's on to mounting the glass shower door, which is a double sliding door. And it is this frame style, not a frameless style. So I start by taking these two upright pieces here, mounting it with three screws. So I am gonna have to use my diamond bit and drill through the porcelain tile in those three spots. And then we're gonna mount it with just regular screws, but we're gonna put silicone behind it so it doesn't leak. So I've got the base centered and I'm just gonna use my level here to make sure that it's perfectly plumb up and down. Now I'm gonna mark my three holes. So in order to drill our holes in these porcelain tiles, I have a cheapo diamond hole saw kit that I got from China of a kit of like 20 of them. Believe it or not, this is working for me. I've already got four out of the six holes drilled. Now when you're using these, because they don't have a center point, you gotta really lean in on the side as you start the hole and then work your way to flat. Otherwise it's gonna wander all over. Now the main thing about drilling with this type of bit is you need to drill on slow and you need to be dipping it in water and clearing out all the chips constantly, like every 10 seconds. Otherwise you will burn up the bit. Ask me how I know. Anyways, yeah, let's dump this in some water, start our bit on the side and just start drilling. There are a little center plug and we're all the way through. Okay, I've got my two uprights held in place. Now I'm gonna measure for the bottom strip, which we need to measure to the inside of this channel because it is a double layer. So our measurement will be smaller than it is on the top. Looks like about 49, but I am going to cut it about an eighth of an inch long and sneak up on the fit as I can't get a precise measurement this way. So because all these pieces are aluminum, I can use standard carbide tipped woodworking tools. So at the chop saw, I'm just gonna chop my line right here at 49 and an eighth, and we'll take a little bit off if we need to later. So for the upper rail, it's the same thing. We're just gonna use the chop saw, except this one is measured at 50 and a quarter, which is the full width of the shower, minus about a millimeter for wiggle room. All right, we're ready to get everything mounted. So we're gonna start at the bottom here. I've got some clear silicone caulk, and I'm going to first put this in the corner where this threshold meets the wall on both sides. Then I'm gonna lay a strip along the entire backside of the bottom bracket because there's no fasteners or anything, and you only want it on the back because if water sheds, you want it allowed to come out the front. Now with these side pieces, we'll get these installed after that bottom's in place and I will add silicone inside each three holes as well as a little bit around each hole in the back. After that's all set, we'll put silicone along the back side only, not the inside where the shower is. Again, if water gets in there, you want it to be able to drain.
So in order to fasten these uprights to the wall, we have three different holes on each side, so six total. And we have six of these washer slash bumpers right here. These are gonna catch the doors as they open so they don't slam into the wall or close, I guess. And then I have these three inch wood screws here as the screws that came with this were only an inch long, so there's no way they were gonna hit the stud back there. So we'll drive this through this little washer grommet bumper dealy, install this in all six spots. And then we put a little cap on it. So now I'm gonna install these three little guide rails. One goes in the middle, it hooks under this bottom edge right here, and then there's two screw holes right here. Now these two on the outside hook under the same, and then we slide them in, but we only drive in the one screw right here. Same on this side, just the opposite. Okay, now it's time to slide the top rail on, and it just rests on top of the two uprights. So I have the door laid out on my carpet here so nothing shatters and I'm just going to install these two wheels on each side of the top here. They have a little adjuster on the top if we get it in place and it's not in square or parallel with the edges. And then there's just two screws right here and some rubber bushings in here that go along. So the way this works is there's two rails, one for each door on each side, and the wheels just go up, hook in place. So the last thing to do is install these door handles. The sucker's complete. So our next step, we're going to be putting on the tile and grout sealer all over the whole shower. We'll get one coat, except for the bottom, we'll get two coats because this is a porous tile. Okay, so the very last thing to do before this project is over is install all of our fixturing. So I need to cut off this plastic edge around here and make it flush, take off this cover, install the shower wand up there and the rainfall shower head up above and that's it so first step let's take this off and we'll attempt to cut this flush this plate just slides right over top then we install our on off handle and then we slide on our diverter handle. Now we're going to install the rainfall shower head. First, I need to remove this plug, which was put in after we water tested and before we started tiling. So I'll just unscrew this. And you see I've got some Teflon tape on here. We'll just screw this in. And then slide this plate over. And now we'll just screw on our shower head. And as you can see, it does allow for some pivot. So over here, the wand is a little bit different. It's not just a pipe we screw in. We have this little adapter that we're going to screw in first. So let's remove our cap again. So now we want to get this guy installed here. And we just are going to screw it in like this with some Teflon tape. Get our adjustable. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. We gotta first put the plate over it and we just slide it over top. And then from underneath, there's two set screws and then this guy is fully mounted. So we push our cap against the wall and hang up the wand. Now as an extra, I did buy this swivel and install it on my own because I felt like it needed it. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Oh my god. It's splashing my leg. The 
Let's see how this works. Can we combine them? Oh. Nope. It apparently is either or. Well, that's it. The shower is complete. All that's left is to close the door and get wet. I'll take two.